Rescue workers live in a world of extreme highs and lows. They begin each day not knowing whether it'll bring the joy of saving a life or the emptiness of losing one. This story is not a recreation. It's a look at the caring medical professionals in Idaho Falls, Idaho. September 3rd, 1993, 7.05 p.m. A call comes in reporting a six-year-old hit by a car while riding her bike. The accident occurred in front of the home of Vicki Evans, who happens to be a paramedic. I heard the thud and saw the little girl flying away from the car onto the cement. The police measured it and told me that she had flown 39 feet. She was not conscious, and I kept her on her side so that the vomitus would go out of her mouth and not get down into her airway. Um, by this time, the quick response unit from Shelley had arrived, and I said, um, I'm a paramedic with Seattle Falls Fire Department, and I want oxygen, and I want a backboard, and I want your suction now. She was never conscious. I got there, and she was, she was never been conscious. After we got her in the ambulance, her mother arrived, and I could see her looking for any sign of hope that she was okay. The little girl's mother, Brenda Price, was at home a block away when she heard the sirens. Nobody was making any promises that she was going to be okay. I didn't want to get in their way because I knew that they were the people who could help where I really couldn't. Are you alone? Six-year-old Jenna is taken to the Air Idaho Rescue Helicopter under the care of flight nurse Margaret McGill. My secondary assessment, her abdomen was firmer than the first time I examined it. She probably was bleeding inside. We've got to get her to a hospital that can operate on her now. Among those treating the little girl during the flight is medic Doran Howard. She was slowing down a lot, and we needed to get as much oxygen on board as we could. Then her abdomen distended, and then we knew she was starting to go into shock. At Eastern Idaho Regional Medical Center, emergency physician Jeff Stiglitz takes over her care. It was clear that she had a more serious injury than just um, a head injury, and we were, became concerned that she was in shock, which is a situation where not enough blood flow was going to the various parts of the body. But she was very pale, and her pulse was very rapid, and her blood pressure was low. Okay, let's go ahead and get x-ray and start getting that. Test x-ray in a pelvis, is that what you're going to do? Yeah, she's fine, Jeff. Nurse Ruth Ann Reichert, director of Air Idaho Rescue, is also a member of the trauma team. With children, a lot of times they'll hold steady and hold steady, and then all of a sudden the bottom will drop out. And she just looked like one of those people where that was going to happen soon. Let me stand in on this. I need that one. Okay. Okay, you ready with the new I like to involve the parents as much as I can, no matter how bad it is. Hi, Jenna. Mama loves you. Even though she was unconscious, she could hear because when they asked her, you know, if she wanted to see her mother, she opened her eyes. It's going to hurt a little bit, but you're going to be okay. There are some paramedic students observing in the emergency room that day. They happened to both hold the Office of Priesthood in the LDS Church, so they could just give a blessing right then and there. Keep fighting. Your spirit is strong. Father knows this. I want you to keep fighting for him and your family. And these blessings are in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Pulse rate is 147, heart rate is 75 out of 49. So her pulse has gone back up. Her pulse has gone up. She is in hemorrhagic shock. There's no time to do a CAT scan of her head at this time. We're going to have to take her up to the operating room. Dr. Richards is going to open her abdomen and stop that bleeding. Okay. Right now, Surgeon Jim Richards is in charge of Jenna's team of doctors. She had a ruptured spleen and a moderate amount of blood in the abdominal cavity. 
the spleen was removed and the bleeding controlled from that injury. But in addition, she had a very, very large area of hemorrhage around the left kidney. It's really quite extensive, extending all the way up and down the uh, patient's entire left side, and it does cross the midline and go into the pelvis. And the debate is whether we should open this or not. I'm inclined not to open it because if we can stabilize her and make sure it's not continuing to bleed, we wouldn't have a chance to do more diagnostic assessment. Which means she'll have to come out of the operating room, go down to the CAT scan. Okay. They'll look at, at her brain at that time. Um, typically with something like this where she had such a rapid loss of consciousness, um, it would just be a, a blood clot in the brain area. And sometimes they can evacuate that. And sometimes it's just a big blow to the head and there's nothing they can do surgically. Try to keep her head still, okay? So far, each picture is looking basically normal. Third ventricle is right square in the midline, so that means there's no swelling on either side, which is good. I'm really pretty optimistic about a, a good recovery of consciousness in terms of the brain injury. Okay. Hi. Well. We've got some good news for you. We, we just completed the scans on the head and the neck, and they're okay. So that means there's no bleeding in the head. We're not going to have to do any brain surgery. She still may need some more surgery. It didn't matter what physical condition, I would take my baby alive. I just felt a lot of peace there. Things are getting better, and so far so good is the best way to look at it. At that point, they kept getting the abdomen as well, which showed them that the kidney was in even worse shape than the spleen. So they just, they didn't even try to repair it. They just took it out. How you doing, honey? You be okay? She's waking up. And uh, I think that's encouraging. And I really feel that we've covered a lot of territory since last evening. We just need to anticipate that over the next uh, day or so, we can probably get her off the ventilator and let her tell us what she thinks about all this. I suspect <laughs> uh, we'll both get scotch blessings. <laughs> The day after the accident, neighbor Vicki Evans stops by to see Jenna. Not, not as much as it does to you guys, but there's just no way to say thank you for saving a child, you know. No, but I'm glad I was there. I'm glad so I was my. there. If I made a difference, I'm glad I was there. So am I. Yeah. How's she doing today? She's doing pretty good. She's, She's doing getting okay. better every day. She recognized everybody good and everything. Jenna, this is a friend. This is Vicki. Hi, Jenna. How are you doing today? You doing okay? Well, this is a heck of a place to be, isn't it, Jenna? This isn't fun at all, is it? This is Vicki. She lives in the greenhouse on the corner. She was there when Jenna got into the accident. I was very gratified that I had been trained to the point that I was able to react appropriately for the situation without even thinking about it, because when it happened, I was scared to death. And I'm going to go and let you rest now. It's good to see you. I hope you do really well, okay? I really feel like God was really looking out for Jenna to have Vicki there because she could get things going. She was the first one there, and she could just Thank you very look much. out for my baby girl. If you need anything, you let us know, okay? Anybody who's willing to give that and put themselves under that kind of stress to save other people's lives, they're just special kind of people. Well, the problem was not visible during the cat scan. Jenna K. Price suffered a traumatic brain injury. Her recovery has been slow. Jenna has had to go through some intensive physical therapy to rehabilitate her to where she can use her arms and her legs again like she did before. She's always been very spunky, and it's good to see her want to get out there and get moving and do what everybody else is able to do. Okay, honey. I think that spirit of hers really keeps her going. I like to make snowmen and throw snowballs at my mom and my sister. Hey, how come you're ganging up on mom? Ah. As a single parent, I've told my girls that no matter what comes along, it doesn't matter because we can get through it as long as we hold together. <laughs> when Jenna was in the hospital, 
I held her hand and I remember reading her books. I would tell my Jenna to always look both ways and to go kind of slow and wear a white helmet. We had an amazing amount of support from our community. In December, I wrote a letter telling them thank you and suggesting to them that buying a bike helmet for their child for Christmas would be a truly loving gift. If I had the extra after Christmas, I would have been wearing my bike helmet. It is important to wear a bike helmet so you don't crack your head open. <laughs> We've been through so much together. The good times seem so much better because you really appreciate what you have. You ready to go in? And warm up and dry off? I am just so grateful that Jenna is getting better. She brings a lot of joy to people. It's still snowing. I think that God was saving her for a special reason. Next. Even though it was really hard to understand his individual words, it was not hard to understand that something was really wrong.